perceptual control theory is a model of behavior based on the principles of negative feedback, but differing in important respects from engineering control theory. Results of PCT experiments have demonstrated that an organism controls neither its own behavior, nor external environmental variables, but rather its own perceptions of those variables. Actions are not controlled. They are varied so as to cancel the effects that unpredictable environmental disturbances would otherwise have on controlled perceptions. According to the standard catchphrase of the field, behavior is the control of perception. PCET demonstrates circular causation in a negative feedback loop closed through the environment. This fundamentally contradicts the classical notion of linear causation of behavior by stimuli, in which environmental stimuli are thought to cause behavioral responses, mediated by intervening cognitive processes. Numerous computer simulations of specific behavioral situations demonstrate its efficacy, with extremely high correlations to observational data, such as are routinely expected in physics and chemistry. While the adoption of PCT in the scientific community has not been widespread, it has been applied not only in experimental psychology and neuroscience, but also in sociology, linguistics, and a number of other fields, and has led to a method of psychotherapy called the method of levels. PCT has roots in insights of Claude Bernard and 20th century control systems engineering and cybernetics. It was originated as such, and given its present form and experimental methodology, by William T. Powers, the place of purpose and causation in psychology, a tradition from Aristotle through William James recognizes that behavior is purposeful rather than merely reactive. However, the only evidence for intentions was subjective. Behaviorists following Wundt, Thorndike, Watson, and others rejected introspective reports as data for an objective science of psychology. Only observable behavior could be admitted as data. There follows from this stance the assumption that environmental events cause behavioral actions. This assumption persists in cognitive psychology, which interposes cognitive maps and other postulated information processing between stimulus and response, but otherwise retains the assumption of linear causation from environment to behavior. Another, more specific reason for psychologists rejecting notions of purpose or intention was that they could not see how a goal could cause the behavior that led to it. PCT resolves these philosophical arguments about teleology because it provides a model of the functioning of organisms in which purpose has objective status without recourse to introspection, and in which causation is circular around feedback loops. History the unaffiliated scientist William T. Powers recognized that to be purposeful implies control, and that the concepts and methods of engineered control systems could be applied to biological control systems. Powers recognized further that in any control system the variable that is controlled is not the output of the system, but its input, that is, a sensed and transformed function of some state of the environment that could be affected by the control system's output, because some of these sensed and transformed inputs appear as consciously perceived aspects of the environment. Powers labeled the controlled variable perception. The theory came to be known as perceptual control theory or PCT rather than control theory applied to psychology because control theorists often assert or assume that it is the system's output that is controlled. In PCT it is the internal representation of the state of some variable in the environment, a perception in everyday language that is controlled. The basic principles of PCT were first published by Powers, Clark, and McFarland as of general feedback theory of behavior in 1960, with credits to cybernetic authors Wiener and Ashby. 
and has been systematically developed since then in the research community that has gathered around it. Initially, it received little general recognition, but is now better known. Example, a simple negative feedback control system is a cruise control system for a car. A cruise control system has a sensor which perceives speed as the rate of spin of the drive shaft directly connected to the wheels. It also has a driver adjustable goal specifying a particular speed. The sense speed is continuously compared against the specified speed by a device which subtracts the currently sensed input value from the stored goal value. The difference determines the throttle setting, so that the engine output is continuously varied to counter variations in the speed of the car. This type of classical negative feedback control was worked out by engineers in the 1930s and 1940s. If the speed of the car starts to drop below the goal speed, for example when climbing a hill, the small increase in the error signal, amplified, causes engine output to increase, which keeps the error very nearly at zero. If the speed exceeds the goal, e.g., when going down a hill, the engine is throttled back so as to act as a brake. So again the speed is kept from departing more than a barely detectable amount from the goal speed. The result is that the cruise control system maintains a speed close to the goal as the car goes up and down hills, and as other disturbances such as wind affect the car's speed. This is all done without any planning of specific actions, and without any blind reactions to stimuli. The same principles of negative feedback control apply to living control systems. The thesis of PCT is that animals and people do not control their behavior, rather, they vary their behavior as their means for controlling their perceptions, with or without external disturbances. This directly contradicts the historical and still widespread assumption that behavior is the final result of stimulus inputs or cognitive plans. The methodology of modeling, and PCT as model. The principal datum in PCT methodology is the controlled variable. The fundamental step of PCT research, the test for controlled variables, is the slow and gentle application of disturbing influences to the state of a variable in the environment which the researcher surmises is already under control by the observed organism. It is essential not to overwhelm the organism's ability to control, since that is what is being investigated. If the organism changes its actions just so as to prevent the disturbing influence from having the expected effect on that variable, that is strong evidence that the experimental action disturbed a controlled variable. It is crucially important to distinguish the perceptions and point of view of the observer from those of the observed organism. It may take a number of variations of the test to isolate just which aspect of the environmental situation is under control, as perceived by the observed organism. PCT employs a black box methodology. The controlled variable as measured by the observer corresponds to a reference value for a perception that the organism is controlling. The controlled variable is thus an objective index of the purpose or intention of those particular behavioral actions by the organism, the goal which those actions consistently work to attain despite disturbances. With few exceptions, in the current state of neuroscience this internally maintained reference value cannot be directly observed as such, nor have all of the relevant electrical and chemical variables been traced by their specific pathways while a living organism is engaging in what we externally observe as behavior. However, when a working negative feedback system simulated on a digital computer performs essentially identically to observed organisms, then the well-understood negative feedback structure of the simulation or model is understood to demonstrate the unseen negative feedback structure within the organism. Data for individuals are not aggregated for statistical analysis, instead, a generative model is built which replicates the data observed for individuals with very high fidelity. To build such a model of a given behavioral situation requires careful measurements of three observed variables. 
chi the input quantity, that aspect of the stimulus which the subject perceives and has been demonstrated to be controlling, qo the output quantity, that aspect of the subject's behavior which affects the state of chi, d the disturbance, a value summing the effects that any other influences in the environment have on the state of chi. In a controlled experiment one aims to have just one disturbing influence that is under the control of the investigator. But in naturalistic observation the situation is frequently more complex. A fourth value, the internally maintained reference R, is deduced from the value at which the organism is observed to maintain chi, as determined by the test for controlled variables. With two variables specified, the controlled input chi and the reference R, a properly designed control system, simulated on a digital computer, produces outputs QO that almost precisely oppose unpredictable disturbances D to the controlled input. Further, the variance from perfect control accords well with that observed for living organisms. Perfect control would result in zero effect of the disturbance, but living organisms are not perfect controllers, and the aim of PCT is to model living organisms. When a computer simulation performs with greater than 95% conformity to experimentally measured values, opposing the effect of unpredictable changes in D by generating equal and opposite values of QO. It is understood to model the behavior and the internal control loop structure of the organism. By extension, the elaboration of the theory constitutes a general model of cognitive process and behavior. With every specific model or simulation of behavior that is constructed and tested against observed data, the general model that is presented in the theory is exposed to potential challenge that could call for revision or could lead to refutation. Mathematics of PCT To illustrate the mathematical calculations employed in a PCT simulation, consider a pursue tracking task in which the participant keeps a mouse cursor aligned with a moving target on a computer monitor. The model assumes that a perceptual signal within the participant represents the magnitude of the input quantity chi. In the tracking task, the input quantity is the vertical distance between the target position T and the cursor position C, and the random variation of the target position acts as the disturbance D of that input quantity. This suggests that the perceptual signal P quantitatively represents the cursor position C minus the target position T, as expressed in the equation P equals CT. Between the perception of target and cursor and the construction of the signal representing the distance between them there is a delay of tau, milliseconds, so that the working perceptual signal at time t represents the target to cursor distance at a prior time, t tau. Consequently, the equation used in the model is 1. P equals C, T the negative feedback control system receives a reference signal R which specifies the magnitude of the given perceptual signal which is currently intended or desired. Both R and P are input to a simple neural structure with R excitatory and P inhibitory. This structure is called the comparator. The effect is to subtract P from R yielding an error signal E that indicates the magnitude and sign of the difference between the desired magnitude R and the currently input magnitude, P of the given perception. The equation representing this in the model is 2 E equals RP The error signal E must be transformed to the output quantity QO. Experiments have shown that in the best model for the output function, the mouse velocity V cursor is proportional to the error signal E by a gain factor G. Thus, when the perceptual signal P is smaller than the reference signal R, the error signal E has a positive sign, and from it the model computes an upward velocity of the cursor that is proportional to the error. The next position of the cursor CNEW is the current position cold plus the velocity V cursor times the duration DT of one iteration of the program. By simple algebra, we substitute G asterisk E for V cursor, yielding a third equation. 3. CNEW equals cold plus GEDT. These three simple equations or program steps constitute the simplest form of the model for the tracking task. 
When these three simultaneous equations are evaluated over and over with the same random disturbances d of the target position that the human participant experienced, the output positions and velocities of the cursor duplicate the participant's actions in the tracking task above within 4.0% of their peak-to-peak -peak range. In great detail, this simple model can be refined with a damping factor D which reduces the discrepancy between the model and the human participant to 3.6% when the disturbance D is set to maximum difficulty. 3. CNEW equals cold plus asterisk DT detailed discussion of this model in includes both source and executable code, with which the reader can verify how well this simple program simulates real behavior. No consideration is needed of possible nonlinearities such as the Weber Fechner law, potential noise in the system, continuously varying angles at the joints, and many other factors that could afflict performance if this were a simple linear model. No inverse kinematics or predictive calculations are required. The model simply reduces the discrepancy between input P and reference R continuously as it arises in real time, and that is all that is required, as predicted by the theory. Distinctions from engineering control theory Even a cursory reading of the Wikipedia article for engineering control theory shows that in the artificial systems described there the reference signal is considered to be an external input to the plant. In engineering control theory, the reference signal or set point is public in PCT, it is not, but rather must be deduced from the results of the test for controlled variables, as described above in the methodology section. This is because in living systems a reference signal is not an externally accessible input, but instead originates elsewhere within the system. In the hierarchical model, error output of higher level control loops, as described in the next section below, evokes R from synapse local memory, and the strength of R is proportional to the strength of the error signal or signals from one or more higher level systems. In engineering control systems, in the case where there are several such reference inputs, a controller is designed to manipulate those inputs so as to obtain the effect on the output of the system that is desired by the system's designer. And the task of a control theory is to calculate those manipulations so as to avoid instability and oscillation. The designer of a PCT model or simulation specifies no particular desired effect on the output of the system, except that it must be whatever is required to bring the input from the environment into conformity with the reference. In perceptual control theory, the input function for the reference signal is a weighted sum of internally generated signals and loop stability is determined locally for each loop in the manner sketched in the preceding section on the mathematics of PCT. The weighted sum is understood to result from reorganization. Engineering control theory is computationally demanding, but as the preceding section shows, PCT is not. For example, contrast the implementation of a model of an inverted pendulum in engineering control theory with the PCT implementation as a hierarchy of five simple control systems. A hierarchy of control perceptions in PCT are constructed and controlled in a hierarchy of levels. For example, visual perception of an object is constructed from differences in light intensity or differences in sensations such as color at its edges. Controlling the shape or location of the object requires altering the perceptions of sensations or intensities. This organizing principle is applied at all levels, up to the most abstract philosophical and theoretical constructs. The Russian physiologist Nicholas Bernstein independently came to the same conclusion that behavior has to be multi-ordinal, organized hierarchically, in layers. A simple problem led to this conclusion at about the same time both in PCT and in Bernstein's work. The spinal reflexes act to stabilize limbs against disturbances. 
Why do they not prevent centers higher in the brain from using those limbs to carry out behavior? Since the brain obviously does use the spinal systems in producing behavior, there must be a principle that allows the higher systems to operate by incorporating the reflexes, not just by overcoming them or turning them off. The answer is that the reference value for a spinal reflex is not static, rather, it is varied by higher level systems as their means of moving the limbs. This principle applies to higher feedback loops, as each loop presents the same problem to subsystems above it, whereas an engineered control system has a reference value or set point adjusted by some external agency. The reference value for a biological control system cannot be set in this way. The set point must come from some internal process. If there is a way for behavior to affect it, any perception may be brought to the state momentarily specified by higher levels and then be maintained in that state against unpredictable disturbances. In a hierarchy of control systems, higher levels adjust the goals of lower levels as their means of approaching their own goals set by still higher systems. This has important consequences for any proposed external control of an autonomous living control system. At the highest level, reference values are set by heredity or adaptive processes.